Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to Ruby Tutorials for Beginners. In the last video, I showed you a very important concept, which are the if statements in um, programming. I'm going to show you the second, uh, also very important concept in programming, which are the loops. Um, basically, the loops are a core knowledge and they're a cooler thing to know. And in Ruby, there are a couple of types of um, loops, but I'll be showing you the for loop, the while loop, and the do while. Those are the three mo most important loops that you should know for now. Later on, when we learn arrays or objects, I'll show you uh, more complex loops, but don't worry about that right now. So let's set um, a variable a to one, all right? Now I'm gonna show you the while loop. So how would we do go if we want to uh, display 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? Now we're not going to say put uh, 1 and then put 2 like that 10 times. I mean, yeah, that will say 1, 2, but what, what if we want to do it like a thousand times? We're not going to write it a thousand times. We can do that thing with just four lines of code. And it's very simple. We're going to write while and then a condition. Now the condition will be, for example, if a is less than or equal to 10 and then we're gonna end it and we're gonna put a all right um, now let's go ahead uh, over what we just wrote so I'm gonna go ahead uh, really slowly so you can understand it so how this works so we're gonna go while and like in this statement there's a condition and that's your condition right here and th the condition is is a uh, less than or equal to 10 is 1 less than or equal to 10 yes so it's going to go ahead and do put a. So it's going to execute whatever is in here. And it's going to execute that uh, um, X amount of times until it's false. So this is all, uh, always true. So we're basically going to get um, an endless loop. I mean, there's no stop because 1 is all, always less than or greater than 10. Now I can stop that by cl clicking on Control c on Mac and then, you know, clearing it out. Now to fix it, we can just type in a plus equals one what that means is basically a uh, equals a plus one the a plus equals uh, one is just a shorthand now if you run it we're gonna get it from one to ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten see in four lines of code we went from one to ten instead of writing you know a thousand times puts it's much simpler and it saves a lot of time trust me all right so let's go ahead that process one more time so first of all, we have the value one, and we're gonna go ahead. Is one less than or greater, um, less than or equal to ten? Yes, it's gonna display one, and then it's gonna increase the value to two. Now it's, this is still true, so it's gonna check with two. Is two less than or equal to ten? Yes, it's gonna uh, display two, and it's gonna increase the value to three. Now it's gonna check with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it's gonna come to ten, and it's gonna check is. 10 less than or equal to 10 was well, not less than 10 but it is equal to 10 so it's going to display 10 if we remove the equal to we will get from 1 to 9 because it's going to go to 10 and it's going to check is 10 less than 10 nope and the and the loop so the second this condition becomes false the loop will stop automatically now we can do this up to a thousand i mean up to a hundred a thousand a million whatever number you want so that's the while loop. It's a really simple concept. Now let's move on to the for loop. So the for loop is a little bit strange, tr uh, stranger than any other for loop in other any other language. For example, in JavaScript, C++, PHP, whatever you want. Um, the for loop is used to display something a num um, to to increase the value automatically. You know, because the, with the while. We can do it a thousand times. We can create endless loops, but we also have to say, you know, to increase the value. In the for loop, it automatically increases the value. F for example, we can just type in for i in uh, 1 to 10, do, puts i, and then end. All right, now let's go ahead through our code. So as you can see here, uh, we don't have i defined anywhere before this. That's not a problem. So we're gonna say for i that we define right here in one, two, ten, 10. And then we're gonna do basically this code, um, not puts one, puts i. Um, you know, it has to be the same here. Um, it's gonna do this code 10 times. So let's go ahead and clear that and run it. Um, actually, it runs it nine times, and I'm going to explain why in just a second. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
Uh, nine, yeah. Um, the thing is, if we do one to ten with just two dots, not three dots, we get one to ten. All right. Now the difference between two dots and three dots is basically the difference between less than and less than equals like in the while loop when we remove the equal you know when we get to the 10 we check if it if it's less than equal it's not less so it's equal it's going to execute one more time with two dots it's for example the same as doing uh like like this but we're just doing one two ten when we put three dots it's the same as saying is i like uh, less than 10 which is true but with 10 it's not true so it's gonna output to 9 um, let's run it and we can see that we get from 1 to 9 remove the two dots you know 1 to 10 so a really simple pr um, concept it's a really simple loop for loop is used a lot trust me uh, also if we're going through an array or an object or a dictionary or anything like that all right now the last loop I want to show you in this video is the do while. The do while there's pretty much no um, do while built in loop into Ruby like in any other language, but it's also it's also used a lot. So basically, to create an endless loop, we can just do loop uh, loop do put for example a and end it, and that will create an endless loop. Um, without even a while or for statement. Okay, let's end that. Now we can use that with an if to create a do while. So what, what a do while is first, it's gonna execute something and then it's gonna check if it's true or not. For example, with while, first we check and then we execute. Same thing goes for for. Well, actually, for for there's no condition. We just say how many times we want something to do. With while there's a condition and while that condition is true, it's gonna output something. But if the condition in the very first uh, time is false nothing will display it. but with the do while at least we are sure that one time the code will execute for example we have a variable call uh, equal to one all right now let's do a do while so we're gonna say put a and right now it's gonna execute a a uh, hundred million billion times you know forever basically until your memory uh, runs out um, now we're gonna combine our knowledge of loops and if statements to create a do while so in the end we're gonna say if a is for example let's say uh, greater than 10 uh, we're gonna end it. We're gonna say break. For example, uh, break just means exit out of the loop. You know, just stop. Now let's run that, and we get an endless loop again. Now I'm gonna explain why. Okay, so we're going through this loop, and it's gonna display uh, a. Okay, we are 100% sure that this code, uh, this code right here, will run no matter if a is 100. I mean, uh, nine or one, because this is not true. But for example, um, we then check if a is greater than 10. It's not. So it's just going to continue to loop this around. Okay. It's not going to ever stop. Um, but if we say um, else here, and we can do a plus equals to 1. Now we can run that. And we pretty much get 11. Now, why do we get 11? Why don't we get 10 like in the while loop? Okay, so as I said, we are 100% sure that this code will execute at least one time. So we're going 1, and then it's going to check is 1 less uh, greater than 10? Nope, so it's going to continue to go ahead. Uh, actually, it's going to say else, then it's going to increase to 2, then it's going to um, output 2, and then it's going to check again, then it's going to increase to 3, and then we're going to get to 10, and we're going to check is 10 uh greater than 10 no okay that's the difference it's not uh it's not greater it's equal so it's gonna say else a plus equals to one is gonna increase to 11 and it's gonna output 11 and it's gonna go to this statement right here and it's gonna say it's 11 greater than 10 yes break it just exit out of the this whole loop and that's why we get 11 because we check um, we execute the code at least once before checking something if, if something is true 
and that's the difference between a do while and a while. With the while first we check and then we execute. With a do while first we execute and then we check. So those are the main loops in Ruby. I uh, hope you guys can remember those. They're really simple and with a lot of practice you will master them. So I'll see you in the next video.